Dire Bear. It's Tuesday night, so of course that means we're playing Star Wars Remnant Shadow uh, using the old West End Games D6 system. Uh, let's see. Last week, uh, how are the volumes? Uh, I just thought it was spiking up a little high. <clears throat> anyway, as I was saying. All right, so last week, anybody remember what happened? <laughs> Nothing important, I'm sure. It was, it was probably just a nice shopping episode. We got tea. Was, we're going to go watch the races. Yeah, nothing happened. All right, so y'all arrived at... Uh, Kala. Yeah, Kala. Uh, think of it as a planet that's a university town. So you arrived, you made your inquiries about the uh, medication that you've been sent to buy. Uh, yeah. Cut a deal, but it was going to be a few days till the stuff was produced and delivered. Uh, and other than that, you explored the city a little bit. Ozen made some new friends. Uh, yeah. It's nice to have friends that are relatively close to my age. Yeah, yeah. And they would be, yeah, they'd be within spit distance. Mm -hmm. And I had their names written down somewhere. I think it was Thrall and Jord. Jord. It was Thrall and Jord. Jord, I believe, was the one that was buying Ozen a drink. It was Thrall and Jord, sorry. Thrall, Thrall, okay. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, they had invited you to the race. Uh, they worked for a speeder design uh, firm and basically took a vacation to come out here and, and enter this race. Uh, used to race in their teens. Uh, they've got their old racer fixed up, the White Witch. Uh, as this is going on, uh, I think it was Io that discovered there was a bounty hunter it was technically the R2 unit, and the R2 unit told her. Right. Well, he spotted somebody watching the ship, yeah. and then Io tracked down all the information on the guy. Yeah. Do you remember what his name was? Do not think he's been given one. Yeah, I don't think he was given one. I've just been calling him Birdman. You're muted, Eric, if you're speaking. The Tox Corvus. Thank you. Oh, Corvus. yeah, Corvus. Corvus. Yeah. I saw, I saw Eric's lips move. I was like, he's definitely <laughs> trying to say the name right now. If anybody has the name. It's Eric. But, uh... But, yes. Uh, back on uh, Nar Shaddaa, y'all had been jumped. Uh, killed some of the people attacking you. Turns out one of his father was somebody fairly important. Who was apparently hired a bounty hunter to... Uh, Bring the bring the good captain back uh, to ask him some pointed questions about what exactly happened to his daughter. <clears throat> Several of you also spotted uh, a group of imperial diplomats being shown being given a tour of the city. Uh, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say Doc made a friend, but Doc met another droid, had a chat with him. Give it time, you'll be friends in no time. Yeah, certainly, dude certainly seemed friendly enough. 
Uh, what do you mean shoot? I don't shoot people. What do you mean you don't shoot people? Like, only very, very specific droids shoot people. It's not that common a thing, really. Uh, he was an assassin droid all along. Dun, dun, dun. Doc is the big bad. I don't know. Last time I played any kind of robot, I was playing a diplomatic unit, and the diplomatic units can also pop knives out of their hands, because, you know, why wouldn't you? They pop anyway. them up diplomatically. But, uh... So, anyway, the session, I guess, ended when Ozen and... I believe it was Keltzer that went with Ozen? Uh, Io. Io, okay. Uh, that's right. Keltzer was in the bar when they met the racers, I think. Mm. No. No, it was just it was just Ozen by herself. Okay. Yeah. For, some, for some reason, I was thinking somebody else was with you then, but I guess it was later. No. It was Keltzer and Doc that were running around together. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll get it sorted out eventually. I'm old. Leave me alone. Uh, so anyway, we wrapped up with Ozan and Io had uh, gone down to the uh, gone down to the sea to watch the races. They'd been invited, you know, into the pit with the White Witch's crew. Uh, however, while they were there before the race started, while they were there, uh, COVID, sh COVID, Corvus showed up. Look, I've been, I've been reading the, watching the nice slip. Like, uh, Corvus showed up and uh, began demanding to know where the uh, captain was and as they kind of step out into the hallway from the pit uh, the imperial delegation comes rounding the corner on their you know tier of the facilities uh, so we ended with a well armed bounty hunter in front of all of you some confused imperials to one side uh, but with a woman stepping in front and holding a We'll just call it a kind of tube-shaped, small tube-shaped object in her hand. You know, stepping in front of the highest-ranking Imperial. I don't think Ozen's quite clocked it yet. I don't think she... Because she's still looking at the bounty hunter. So it might I want to say so... I had drawn specific attention to the fact that Ozen spotted that. Okay. Because Ozen would be the first person to realize what it was. Sure. <clears throat> Now, if they realize it over the Kill Bill sirens going off in their head. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I guess, and she, she like, does a, she does the thing where she's, like, looking at the bounty hunter, hears the footsteps, sees the Imperials, and then it's, like, what's, she looks like she's about to talk, and then the, the Inquisitor walks forward. Well, she steps, in, she steps in, she steps in front of, like, the commanding officer, you know, in, like, a sure. protective position. Right, that's what I'm saying, she... She looks like she's about to say something, and then she just stops. She doesn't say anything. She's still calm, mm. uh, but she's just doesn't say anything, and then turns. And back I believe to Io had opened com a uh, com unit to the captain. No, and she'd o opened it to the ship, yeah. and R two was recording it. And I think Ozan had actually it called opened. had actually called the captain like openly, yes. where, we were, where the hunter knew he had, she had called. Uh, so that's uh, the situation you're in. Uh, yeah. The Imperials, there's a, you know, there's a, there was like four stormtroopers with them too. Uh, they're all kind of taking defensive positions around the, the, their commander or whatever his rank is. Uh, you've got a local official there that's just kind of like, you know, <laughs> if you can imagine a human freaking out like C-3PO freaks out in situations, it's like he's freezing oh, dear. up. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, <clears> dear. <throat> I can see it. Uh, cause, so, yeah, this was supposed to be a real simple just I'm just taking these guys on a tour mm -hmm. and so here's you know the important. one man army mm -hmm. out here confronting people Ozen will look back at the bounty hunter uh, kind of do another back look at the at the at the imperial group and just like turn make sure towards the bounty hunter and be like uh, so, do you want to say the things you were saying again? Certainly. Where is your captain? <clears throat> You're speaking to him. Oh, that's right. Uh... 
<sighs> Tell your captain I have a, you know. Yes, please say bounty in front of the Imperials. Really? Nothing. Yeah. Like they like they don't hire bounty hunters in the in droves. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, there was a bounty out for your captain, or mm -hmm. for for you, captain. Uh, from who? I think I gave you that guy's name last time. I believe you did, did but yeah. this is probably this uh, is the first time they're saying it. Uh. It was, it, was, it was a hunt. Miko Nalprin. Yes, yes. I got him. Nalprin. Not Nalprin, Nalprin. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, he tells you uh, Miko Nalprin. Who? A business from, businessman from Nara Shada. He has questions about your involvement with the death of his daughter. And while he's talking. He's kind of he's kind of put his hands up like this as to not freak the Imperials out. <clears throat> well, if I was involved in the death of his daughter, then maybe his daughter shouldn't have attacked me. Well, that'll be for others to research once we're back on Narshada. If we go back to Narshada, it's a matter of when. And in what condition everyone's in. Well, I mean, if there's a win, it'd be you in a box. Are we done? Are you on your Good ship, question. Captain? Nope. Mm -hmm. The crew has leave to enjoy the festivities. I myself and am joining the city. We will meet sooner than, rather than later. Oh, we've already met. Uh, Multiple times, in point of fact. I'm sorry you can't remember, though. Uh, he just... Did you hand him your... Did Ozen hand him the uh, commune, or is she just holding it up? Oh, she's just holding it up. Okay. Uh, he's not taking shit from me. <laughs> uh... At that point, he just starts ignoring y'all. He turns to the Imperials. Apologies for any alarm. And then he turns and walks down the hallway the opposite direction. <clears throat> well, I have a race to enjoy from a pit view. Aya, would you like to join me? I mean, that's why I'm here, so sure. That's why I'm here. We'll about face and head that way. Uh... Uh, the woman standing in front is giving both of you a kind of a not a hard look exactly, but she's it's like she's studying you, like she's mar like she's marking your face as some some somebody to remember. <clears throat> uh, I will say uh, uh, Ozen does have her hood like up. It's hmm. not like I don't. She doesn't have a mask on, obviously, but she does have her hood up. So like whatever hair she would have had is tied back or whatever. And you do uh -huh. notice in that last bit of conversation, she, you know. She has slipped that object like up the sleeve of her robe, or not? She's not mm -hmm. in robes. Up the sleeve of her jacket. Yep. It, it has uh, definitely been, it has definitely been clocked, and uh, maybe Ozen will get some therapy later. But uh, but as you walk back in, nah. you hear the uh, you hear the diplomat, the local you know, diplomat and the uh, imperial commander, uh, you know, some kind of little. You know, haha, wasn't that funny? You know, more excitement than we than, than we were expecting. Dinner and a show. But, uh... And, uh, and, you know, they stop at the pit and the... They don't enter the pit because, you know, people are working. But, you know, he, he shows them, you know... Uh, the, you hear the commander, you know, uh, compliment Thal and Jord on the, uh... You know, on on having such a classic speeder. Mm. Um, while the, while there, uh, it was Jord or was it Thaw that got like their arm wrenched? Uh, that was Jord. You know, he kind of walked into this little number and the guy grabbed him, yeah, and yeah. pulled it to one side. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Cool. 
Um, uh, she'll go to uh, uh, Thaw is the one speaking to the Imperials. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then she'll just kind of like play like Jordan, be like, uh, "How's the arm?" Anyway, and you've seen him kind of rub it. Oh, it, it's fine. He, it's not like he broke anything or anything. Well, you're driving, like you're aren't strong, you? Strong though. No, Thaw yeah. was the one driving. Okay, never mind then. Uh, then she'll she'll look at she'll look at him and goes well as long as you're okay and she'll kind of give him a look up and down to make sure in case it's because she doesn't like to be a trained healer doesn't mean she isn't a trained healer um Io uh Io probably notices Ozen's like very like not very twitchy but like just a little. A little more twitchy now. Twitchier than normal. Uh, She'll just kind of like, she's eyeballing her, but isn't going to say anything right then and there. It's definitely like the ADHD like thing. After, are the Imperials still there? Uh, no, no, they, they spoke just very briefly, had that brief interaction with, with all, and they walked on to probably the next pit. Okay. After, like, maybe like a minute or two after that, she would have cut the connection on her open com. Mm -hmm. uh, a few minutes later, you do have some of the local security guys come by and just kind of ask you what that was about. Mistaken identity. Mistaken identity. I'm just picturing you, both of you, both of you saying that at the same time, and then pausing, and looking at each other like you were worried you were about to contradict each other, and then realizing you said the same thing, and then continuing on. Uh, but uh, they look a little skeptical, but they don't make a big deal about it. You know, no weapons were drawn. No no, nobody was shot at. So you know, I was gonna say no weapons were drawn. No, no one's hurt. No blood curdling screams. Yeah. Yeah. And bounty hunting is not illegal, so. Though if they checked into the bounty, I don't think it would have been a legit but Is that something Io would have noticed when she I had researched mentioned it? to you that it wasn't something that was posted through the Bounty Hunter Guild. Okay, yeah, it was it wasn't More like, like local stuff. It wasn't like a general bounty put out to just whoever they had specifically hired this guy. They they contracted him. Okay. So that could call. Very out about his name for. He's very out about his employer's name for somebody who's like you know taking a bounty. Well, some people roll like that. Yeah, secrecy may not have been part of the deal. Or it may have been the Imperials right in, in his face. He wanted to make sure they knew, oh yeah, I've got a good reason they're doing this. He murdered, that dude murdered somebody. Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, he gunned somebody down in a back alley. No, no, he threw him off a cliff. It was a cliff in a back alley. <clears throat> All right, so uh, cutting away from the racetrack, what were Keltzer and Doc doing? As far as I know, they went to look for the quote-unquote upgrade kit or upgrade what parts. Yeah, but Keltzer's probably not going to get it. Which Doc? It... Go ahead. Because it has, like, standard stuff, you know? That you probably already have. Yeah, the, the kit doesn't come with, like, anything extraordinarily better. Or any booster to particular skills, so... Mm -hmm. uh, probably just do some light window shopping and then be okay. like, hey! And then Kelser would hit the closest... Um, bar and probably have a couple of drinks while watching the swoop racing on uh, the TV. 
Doc would probably just wander on back to the ship if there is no if there is no need for him. Alrighty. Well, where was that droid's? I mean, could I be. I that droid's name somewhere. Oh well. Uh. So yeah, y'all leave the shop. Uh. You see that you see that droid you'd met in there again. He's out on the street. Uh, what was his? What was he? B L something. B L seventeen. That was his name. Uh, and he just seems to be waiting close to the, you know, close by at the entrance of another store. More shopping, I take it. What? Oh, hello again. And he does have like a little shopping bag in his hand. Ah, yes, my owner is still... Uh, still making purchases. Uh, not all shops are, are welcoming to our kind, though, so... Occasionally I have to... Stand out here holding a bag. Well... Luckily, you won't grow tired, so there is that benefit. No. And, no. Like... and I enjoy people watching. Indeed. Sometimes it's intriguing to see how some people are. However, I am sorry that you have to do the task of what is usually left to... What is it? I believe the term is boyfriend to most species. But in these days, I believe it is just called partner. Yes, well, it, it comes from being a, gen, a generalist. You tend to get tasked with all sorts of mundane things. Sometimes I wish I was a specialist more like yourself. Eh, it does have its perks. At least can guarantee my crew will not suffer. Eh, at least painfully. And again, dry humor, I believe is what that's called. Indeed. I've never caught the knack for humor. I'm still trying to figure out the proper subroutine. It's taking several tries. I think I'm on 2,695. I'll get it one day. Uh, I noticed you were without your owner. Yes, my owner is going to go enjoy refreshments and watch the race at the local bar, or at least at a local bar. There is no need for me, so I shall return back to our ship and continue to make sure that we have all the supplies we need. Well, it was good to speak to you again. Then I hope we meet again. Agreed. It is pleasant, our chats. And Doc will just start slowly walking. And and BL goes back to his people watching. I mean, to be fair, it's interesting in real life to people watch, but I can imagine in this particular universe, people watching, oh lord, there's so much difference to see. But anyway. Alright. Captain... Once you have hung up from from speaking with Corvus, yeah, Corvus, what are you gonna do? Just gonna hunker down on the ship? Uh, for right now, he will. Um, although he will do some searching through the whatever they call the what is effectively the internet. <laughs> My brain can never remember. Hollownet. Hollownet, thank you. My brain was going extra. I'm like, no, that's not it. I think that's Mass Effect. Uh, it's Mass Effect, yeah. Yeah, Hollownet. He will be looking through there a little bit to see if there's any um, any place that sells salvage droids. Salvage droids? Yish. Yeah, this is, this is, this is a big kind of uh, 
industrialized <clears throat> planet. But you, you'd have somebody that sold something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find the page. Let's see, there's the, the, the one Super Droid Inc. P100 Salvage Droid. Yeah, um, he'd be more familiar with the SM Scavenger Droid. Which was primarily used by the Trade Federation. But given his history with them, he's be more familiar with their, their stuff. <clears throat> Although, technically, if you look at it, type, New Republic SM Series Scavenger Droid. So, yeah, you, you, can, you can poke around and see where there's, <clears throat> there's a couple of those for sale on the planet. Okay. Uh, Anyone listing a price? Let's see. What... What style of droid would that be, game-wise? Uh, fifth degree. I forget, is that the more expensive or less expensive ones? The degrees are based off the specialization of the droid. Um, like, first degree... It, like, Duba's character is a first degree droid. Um, R2 is a second degree droid. Um, C-3PO is a third degree, HK was a fourth degree, and fifth degree is, like, hauling and cargo and stuff like that. Okay. No, there's like a, I think there's a price list for droids somewhere. So how many of these are you looking to buy? Uh, that will depend on price. Because he does want something to um, be able to effectively salvage ships. <laughs> you still just really want that ship y'all, that disabled ship y'all found. He wants everything that could make him money. Let's be real here. <clears throat> And yeah, if it's still there, he absolutely wants to harvest the still working components and then sell them for a profit. Not gonna lie. Unless it would make him a profit. Alright, I know it's in here somewhere. But it's taking me too long to find it. Let's see. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Battle droids are two thousand used. But that's not what I'm looking for. We'll have to find the price later. I'm, I'm, I'm not finding it. Fair enough. Because uh, I don't think droids are listed on the regular old. Oh nope, here we go. Never mind, I found it. All right, so a fifth degree droid costs a thousand credits. Oh okay. Uh, and the where is number one, which is readily available throughout the galaxy. Cool. And you said it was fifth. You said it would be fifth degree, right? Yeah. 
Okay. I guess that's about like finding, you know, a cherry picker or a bulldozer or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you'd have no problem getting a couple of those. I think you've got the cash to handle it. Do now. <clears throat> so you're basically on there shopping Amazon. More or less. There's a bounty hunter after me. Huh. wonder what Amazon's got for sale. <laughs> the regular Tuesday. I mean, in his line of work, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, but, uh... <clears throat> so, Keltzer, you walk into a bar. Uh, as usual, you get a lot of attention when you walk in, because Mandalorians aren't that common throughout the galaxy. Yeah. Uh, the bartender just kind of looks at you just walking in. You here looking for somebody? No. Just came here for a drink. You see a lot of people in the bar relax a little bit. <laughs> Maybe I should be looking for somebody. Damn! <laughs> right. Do any of y'all need to be looked for? <clears throat> you know what? That does sound like a good idea. It's saying me... The person, not the character. <laughs> you just start casually going through your data pad. Do any of these guys have bounties on them? Right. So yeah, you walk up to the bar, bartender takes your order. Ask you, you know, what brings you to town? Just, um, a job. Uh, I work on a cargo ship. It's a odd job for a Mandalorian, isn't it? A bit, but... I mean, just because I work on a cargo ship doesn't mean I don't do bounties. Well, as long as you're not here to do that. I hate cleaning. I hate having to clean blood off the floor. At least right now I'm not, so. But uh, several of the view screens in the bar have got the, uh, uh, what would you call it? The race? Yeah, but the race hasn't started yet, so it's like the pre-show or whatever. Oh yeah, so it's just a pre-show. They've got like an analyst desk talking about different racers. You've got whatever a Star Wars blimp would look like floating over the field with a camera. <laughs> It's just a reg it's just the regular blimp, but they have like a stupid jet engine at the back and it's and it's like uh it's like a cage. Maybe there's a gun turret on the top, who knows? But just but mounted with cameras. Yep. Uh so you know, you see I'm going, you know, going over some of the racers and you see some of the some of the speeders, uh when they show the white witch, you recognize that name. Uh, from Ozen and them talking. If they show the pit, the like from the view from the pit, you'll just see, you'll just straight up see Ozen and in, in Io. Uh, actually, yeah, you would, because they they do they do pan through the various pits. Okay. Uh, so you see the guy that must be Jord talking to talking to Ozen. Mm -hmm. It's like checking his arm and double checking it, like.
might look suspicious if you see if you see her like like this like stretching out an arm. Uh, he doesn't seem to be mad. No, any though. I'm sure. Uh, and you know, in the pit, y'all are. You know, you're still kind of fussing over over Jord. Uh, though every now and then he's he kind of steps away to yell at one of the pit crew to do you know this that or the other. Uh, but with your other arm, please. Thank you. Uh, you know, mostly he seems to be telling them to do things that they already knew to be doing. Uh, you get the impression it's how he's dealing with his pre-race jitters. Even though he's not the one actually doing the racing in this instance. Right. Uh, you know, Thal's got his helmet on. They're loading up a... Uh, a droid into the uh, back of the White Witch. I go to. I'll be like, sit there, one second, and I'll turn over to the Thaw. I look at Thaw and be like, "All right, you've got this." He just smiles. Oh, it's been a little while since I've I've done much race. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure I'll be fine. I believe in you. Well, thank you. Let the force be with you. Before he even has an opportunity to, like, say anything to that, uh, she'll... You hear him kind of mutter, and you. <laughs> you know, a little confused, but, you know, he knows what the response is supposed to be to that. Yep. <clears throat> I do the equivalent of, like, you know, in, um... Um... Just, like, Lightly tap the back of the White Witch. The equivalent of like uh, smacking smacking a butt on, on before the before the game begins. I'm not sure racers do that. I think it's a football no. thing. But... No, it's definitely a football thing. But she's just ting ting on the on the ship and or on the speeder and then go back to Jordan. Uh... But as George starts to climb, uh, you know, into the witch, uh, and Kelts would be seeing this from a different point of view, or from a different angle. Uh, everybody in the pit, so Ozen and o Io, uh, give me perception. Search. I'm not sure if search would count for listening. Or that would I just know. be straight perception. You're searching. Okay, I wouldn't say search is like strictly I. Let's see where this gives that. Just want to get a quick... Hey, hey, you're good. Specific... Uh, See if we got a specific definition. Strength. Well, if my pages weren't turned. Uh, All right, perception. Just straight perception. Oh no! I've just found him as well. Oh, okay. He's looking into. He's looking at the skills. Okie dokie. All right, bargain. That is not the one we need. Con gambling. Hide sneak search. Yeah, just straight perception. 
Okay. Search is when you're basically when you're actively doing something. This is just to see if you happen to hear something off in the distance. Okay. I got a thirteen. Okay. Twelve. Alright. Let's see. Easy tasks are still ten. Moderate is fifteen. Or moderate is eleven to fifteen. Both of you think you hear blaster fire. Uh, oh great! Can't I? will kind of look over at Ozen. We both have that same knowing, knowing look. Like, yep, you just heard that too. It's either fireworks or blaster fire. It's definitely not fireworks. I've heard fireworks. It's more of a gun sound. Uh, as y'all are having this discussion, uh, Thal has stood up. You know, he's he's gotten up into the White Witch's seat. He kind of stands up. He's looking around. He's got a look on his face, and you seem to lean over and say something to Jord, uh, who just kind of shrugs. Like, uh. And then he asks the rest of the crew, you guys hear anything? Yeah, uh, stay down. Please stay down. About that time, the the, the kind of roll-up doors on the uh, pits start rolling down. Okay. Uh, Easy enough. Keltzer, watching it on the news, uh, or not on the news, on the... On the uh, Big screen. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if they call them hollow vids or what they call them. But anyway... Uh, Uh, you know, the announcers are talking like normal, uh, but then you see, you can see the pit door start to shut. Uh, uh, and you can hear, you know, the announcers talking, but you kind of, you can kind of hear the intercom uh, playing in the stadium, t asking everybody to remain calm. The stadium's going into lockdown. Uh, you know, there's no need to panic. Just, you know, kind of telling everybody to kind of sit where they are. Uh, and then they, you know, cut to commercial or, or something. Several people in the bar are kind of like, huh. Uh, I'm going to try to... Hmm. Used my comms. Does it work? Okay, your, your, your comms get out fine. There's no... Nobody's blocking a signal here or anything. Okay. Captain? Oh, Otter's dipping out. Later, Otter. Later. Later, Have a good Otter. one, Otter. Thanks for coming by. Yes. Are you watching the hollow... Uh, are you watching the VOD? Not at present, no. Do I need to be? Uh, just hear a little bit of blaster fire, and then there is a remain calm thing on the intercom, which means that something's going on. If Io hears Ozen talking, it wasn't us. I'm <laughs> well aware there'd be a lot more yelling if it was you. <sighs> You know, just something to be kept abreast of. Uh, you know, worst case, you're short two of us for a moment. Just probably the point. You think the bounty hunter's got that much pull that he's gonna, like, stop a race? Fire blasters <clears throat> in the right place. That much pull? What? It's only a three-pound trigger. That's mm -hmm. fair. <clears throat> uh, now the, like I said, the the roll up doors on the pits go down, so the speeders mm -hmm. can't get out. Uh, but the you know the back doors into the hallway are still clear. You know? It's not like every individual room is getting you know, locked or anything. Not oh, like not. a sci-fi lockdown. Every other, every other like foot of space gets segmented off. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, not, it's, it's not doing that at all. 
Okay. With this that. is a civilian facility. <clears throat> what is this build. cube? <laughs> um, Kelser would just throw down um credits for the drink and then head towards the pod racing area. Now, right, so you go down and probably flag down a, a taxi speeder. Or heck, you've got a jetpack. You might just jetpack over there. Just zip off Commander Not... Cody Rocket Man from the Moon style. <laughs> God, what a what a what a reference! You will never make me believe that was not one of the inspirations for Boba Fett. Because uh -uh. Lucas is just the right age. And Star Wars was his shout out to that style of sci-fi. Mm. Uh, so, all right, so Kelter is headed towards the races. Uh, Captain, if you turn on the news, uh, the actual news is just starting to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, an Imperial ambassador has been shot. They do not currently know his condition. Uh, Lovely. Was it me? The uh, perpetrator is uh, at large. Uh, the authorities say they are, you know, they're they are locking down the raceway. You know, and beginning to search the facility. Uh, they ask, you know, they ask people outside the raceway to, you know, clear the area. Uh, or I shouldn't say clear the area, but to, uh, you know, they're asking people, more people not to show up at the place. Mm -hmm. As that will just, you know, complicate law enforcement's uh, investigation. Uh, yeah. Gosh, cut to Kelso. Uh, there is footage of the shooting, but you're just seeing the Imperial... Uh, Entourage, and there's a shot from off camera that hits the guy and he goes down. Mm. Uh, you know the stormtroopers return some, you know, return some shots, but but they're stormtroopers. Storm troopers. Well, we know <laughs> their aim. <laughs> hey, they, they managed to hit the facility, so they're doing all right. But, uh, you know, and then you have analysts come on, you know, you know, asking, you know, who could have done this? You know, why would they have done it here? What's the, what's the, what could the fallout be? Uh, oh, okay. For the sector. I thought you, I thought you were like, I thought you were like, this Imperial officer has been shot. Now we're talking about the race again. <laughs> Mm -mm. Real diplomat killed. Now puppies. <laughs> I want to try to end with a feel good segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, in the pit, uh, there's an announcement made of you know over the intercom basically basically telling you what happened. You know there there has been an attack. Mm. Uh, there is a. Uh, you know, no reason to panic, no reason to, to to feel that you're in danger, just sort of hunker down in place, uh, shelter in place. Uh, security personnel are, you know, conducting a search. Please be prepared to cooperate cooperate with them any way they need. Right. It's a guy in a mask. Looks like a bird. Yep. Uh... I think Ozan's gonna try to hide. Everybody else not, not, just watches you while you crawl up under the witch. I'm not yeah, here. No, not 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 like you know, just stay out of eye line of like where the door opens to, to where slight people would come in. Not like trying to like huh, 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 just like happen to be doing something on off off away from the door or something. 
like you've got some equipment or or the, the yeah. or, or the witch or something is between you and the door. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but definitely like staying out of out of eyeline and then like staying uh especially if she starts to hear footprints like or foot footprints footsteps like staying uh less seen uh you hear foot you you hear people uh not quite marching but they're they're moving at a pace and kind of in sync with each other uh a couple of security guys step into the pit are these local or imps? Oh, these are locals. These are locals. Okay, okay. Never uh, mind. Then. She's fine. In fact, one of them was one of the guys that came by earlier to ask about the bounty hunter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they just do a quick head count. Okay, everybody here is kind of accounted for. Uh, uh, if he doesn't see Ozen, he'll ask about Ozen because Ozen was here last time. As, as she hears her name, she's like, I'm over here. Just ah, working ah, something good, back here. Uh, so yeah, they, he's like, yeah, they, all, everybody, everybody was here before. So you know, they've already got jotted down that you two were guests of you know mm-hmm. of the racers. So they move on without any, you know, a, a couple of quick questions. You know, did you see anything? Did you hear anything? Here you guys see no. Okay, bye. Uh, and yeah, they move on pretty quick. Uh, one of the pit crew has pulled out a. Uh, a screen and has it fired up, you know. So y'all are seeing the the outside news. news. Uh, you see the replay of the guy being shot. Uh, Is pretty... it blaster fire or um, a projectile? It was a bla- It was some kind of blaster bolt. Okay. Yeah, you, okay. You, you can clearly see that. Uh, the glowing red mark. Ozen, what you don't see, well, n- n- none of you see it. Ozen would probably be the one that would pick it out, most uh-huh. specifically. Is when you see the entourage, you know, you see the local guys, you see the stormtroopers, you see the commander. The Sith, the Sith isn't there. You do not see the woman. Well, that explains why he got shot. On the replay, she's not there? Correct. Okay. When, when, you, when you see the footage of the actual shot, she is not with the entourage. If Ozen's standing off to the side, I was going to be like, real like, quiet under her breath, kind of. Do you think it could have been, you know... Not, not the guy that came to visit us. The, the one with the, the outfit trunk. She's not gonna say like names, but well, that's unless he has a blaster rifle, which is possible, sure, but not likely. If you someone who has a a bolt action like that is going to want to use that and not they have it for a reason. In other words, fair enough. It took me a second to realize who y'all were talking about. Which I'm somewhat ashamed of. Um, but no, uh, I don't think so. This is very clearly blaster fire. Unless he's a good shot with the blast of uh, the holdout pistol from however <clears throat> far away he was. I mean, it could be something other than a holdout pistol. One of them rare sniper pistols. Hold, holds it, uh, has like a string attached to a stick attached to a holdout pistol. It's like... <clears throat> uh, but, uh, no, she's... So, anyway... Uh... Y'all are basically hunkered down here for a couple of hours. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, by the by the time they you know, they they let you go, the or start you know start letting people out, the uh, yeah, 
everybody in the pit's kind of bored. Some of some of the pit crew have pulled out cards or like over in the corner playing Sabak. <clears throat> Uh, the uh, you know they finally come out and announce that you may leave. You know they've done a thorough sweep of the place. Uh, you know none of, of course none of you are under the slightest bit of suspicion. Is uh, are they going to actually do the race or did they call, they actually call it off? Uh, they have called it off for the day. Gotcha. Uh, it, it's being delayed. They're still going to have it, but, you know. Uh, essentially, this is still going to be... This is going to be an active crime scene for the rest of the day. But you can only hold, you know, this many thousand people in this small of space for so long. Yeah, I work Black Friday. <laughs> um... And uh, Ozuna will say, uh, do y'all need anything? I want to take uh, Io to the ship. I mean, I can walk back if you wanted to I... hang out. Darn, I'll look at Io like, shut the fuck up. Uh, Dora's like, well, you know, me and Thal, we're going to you know, gonna go grab some dinner. Uh, you know, y'all are welcome to like come a... if you want to, or you know, with all this going on, you know, if y'all just want to get back to home. Does he say, does he say it like a puppy dog, or does he say it like you know? Uh, not too puppy dog. Like, clearly, he would like to have dinner with y'all. Well, sure, you. Uh, yeah. But when he says, you know, but if you want to, if you, if you want after everything's gone on, if you want to go home, completely understand. You know, clearly, he completely gonna... understands that you might just want to. Yeah. yeah. I think, we, I think it's better if we just check in, at, at the very least, you know, head count with the captain. Oh, yeah, yeah. Makes perfect sense. And if there's time, maybe dinner. We'll see. I don't want to get your hopes up. Oh, uh, yeah, you got my number. Just call if you... Just call me if you, you know, you get a chance. If you got time. Io in the background is totally doing, like, eyebrows, like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you all you all have a have a good night. Um, day. She looks up like whatever it may whatever time it might be right now. It's evening, but the sun the sun is has not set yet. Go to the uh, ship, Io. Uh, Kiltzer, like I said, a couple hours have passed. So of course, you you get to the, uh, you know, you got to the to the raceway without any trouble. Uh, but the police were already starting to cordon off the area. You know, they had speeders in the air. You weren't going to be able to get in without making a big commotion. Yeah. Get down. Stop using your jetpack. This Another... space is temporarily, you know, a no-fly zone. A police officer with a jetpack comes by with, like, a siren on their head. <laughs> and, like, an old-fashioned notepad pen. Hmm. He likes to savor those citations he writes. They just hit different ones on paper. Just pulls it off, sticks it to your helmet. Uh. Anyway, so so if everybody meets back up at the ship, uh, You were really you, you. You okay? You were twitchy. Just goes to her room. Good talk. Good talk. <sighs> Just muffled screams into a pillow. So what happened this time? I guess a imperial got shot. That's about all I know. That's normal. Hmm. <clears throat> so we have someone shooting an Imperial officer, a bounty hunter after me, because uh -huh. 
because dear dad because dear daddy couldn't stand having sent his daughter off on a mission she ended up dead because of it and I've just been here shopping for droids your R2 unit whistles like he's alarmed no one can replace you R2 don't worry about it <clears throat> he seems properly consoled just mostly looking for some droids that might be able to salvage wreckage so we can use to sell. Be useful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I was looking at three different kinds. Got. Try and make Doc salvageable. A salvage droid. You can repair a person, you can repair a ship. Can take apart a person, you can take apart a ship. Mm. Welding torches work on both. God. <laughs> Grim, but not incorrect. Yeah. He's not wrong, unfortunately. A welding torch does work on both, just not the desired effect. I'm not saying, especially considering welding <laughs> torches do have a stat block to be used as weapons. Now I'm picturing Doc talking like Zoidberg. Concern. Why oh. not Doc? <laughs> hate that. <laughs> he does have the kind of hands where he could do like the like Zoidberg claws too. Yeah, he does. It's like, yeah, but there's a I found someone who is willing to who sells some droids from the that the Trade Federation typically uses. Well, I'd suggest in looking for them after, you know, you've cleared up the whole issue of, oh, a bounty on your head. Well, yes. A bounty, yes, yes, but what about the money? But have you seen these droids, like, holding up a picture like... Mm-hmm. Not the droids you were looking for. Ha-ha. <sighs> uh -huh. Would I name this one Scrappy? That would be a good name for a salvage droid, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, we're gonna have to deal with him at some point. Although, honestly, considering the look of his gear, I probably <sighs> kind of wanted to strip it off him. Unless he's a machine, in which case we'll have to break him. But I feel like Ozen, like after having like the scream into the pillow vent coming out, that's like the first thing she hears, and she just you hear the you hear the door slide open. She hears that. She just goes back into her room. You can help. It'll either be no. really handy for one of us to wear for battle, or we can sell it for a pretty good chunk of cash. I say we, but... I'm just getting the impression of y'all standing around and guns drawn on the bounty hunters. The captain's sitting there going, take it off. Take it all off. <laughs> that scene from Terminator. <laughs> I mean, your pants. We're going to take your pants and your dignity. Uh. My solution to bounty hunters is always the same. Beat their ass. I mean, it's a tried and true method. I usually just kill them. They're both kind of the same method. Just <clears throat> different kind degrees of, the same of method. Thing. It's just, yeah, it's levels. Mm. Either way. Uh, R2, uh, R2 chirps let you know you've got an incoming message. 
Uh, it's from the Port Authority. It's basically saying nobody, you know, nobody's allowed to leave planet oh. for the moment. He returns a message saying we were planning on being here a few days anyway to because we have cargo to pick up. Uh, it's just an automated message, so. Oh, okay. It's back at the spam. Yeah, I mean, it's literally just something they're sending out to everybody. Hey, nobody uh, can leave you... right now. And, and, and it Get... goes into why, you know, is this, you know, this assassination mm-hmm. attempt. Uh, according to the news, the commander has, you know, is still alive, is expected to recover. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and they go into kind of where he was hit, and if it had been just a couple of inches over, you know, he'd have been, it, we would have killed him, you know, immediately. Shitty assassin. Or... They're yeah. trying to get the planet on lockdown. Bad propaganda. Uh, some reports are coming in of an Imperial response. Uh, where they are... Uh, you know, the Empire is wanting to launch it, its own investigation. Uh, apparently, they don't trust. They, they don't trust uh, uh, Corpsec to do it properly. Fair. Uh, and there's some implication. They don't expressly say it. But there's some implications in how they word the message. You know, their response that uh, that this may be something Corpsec has done intentionally. Mm. Uh, we just got. Yeah, you know, tensions are a little high in the city. You know, they're already a little nervous about you know <sighs> some of, some of the imperial movements in the surrounding sectors, i.e., them conquering the surrounding sectors. Yeah. <sighs> How quaint! The empire collapses, and they go back to to basically doing this bog standard human thing of tribal barbarianism. <sighs> yeah, well, wasn't really limited to humans. That's true. They just happen to be fucking everywhere. Awkward Twi'lek looks. As she realizes the captain may be a racist or species. No. He just doesn't give two fucks right now. They're doesn't getting have in a, the way of his. He's just. Of his he's just got a big. He's line. got his big score. You're yeah, he, a big score. I want to go to the mall and spend my Christmas money. He has to deliver that medicine in thirty days, or it's free. Well, no. It's, what he wants to do is he wants to get that stuff stored, and back to that planet to cash in on the extra pay. Should we contact the planet to let them know there may be a delay? That would How? require us leaving. Remember Bronze, Bronze, oh, Age, Bronze yeah. Age Planet. Yeah. Smoke well, signals hopefully... don't, work, don't go that far. And y'all hopefully specifically talked about it for us. getting any communication equipment. Yep. Whatever you do, don't buy a phone. We should really call them. <sighs> oh, yeah. Darn space Amish. Uh. No, no, that was Esper Genesis where you had the planet of Amish people. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Well. Hmm. Guess we're stuck here dealing with a bounty hunter. Who potentially caused the incident in the first place to keep us locked here on the planet. He is a shitty shot. Hmm. So it could be calculated. I think you're yeah. giving this man more credit than he should. I give everybody more credit than they should have until they've proven to be a liability. Or a Neanderthal. Guy in a bird mask. Weird jar. 
that was, according to IO, hired specifically for this job outside of official channels for bounties. Yeah, and he has looked at you know, the reputation she found for him online is that he's he is an up and comer. Uh, you know, he's got a good rep so far, but he hasn't had like a long career. He's not Boba Fett where he's got a, where he's got the super rep and a long career to back it up. There's only one Boba Fett. What else has? To, what else right has to be a right now, everybody would assume probably assume he's dead because nobody's seen him in a while. Sure. Yep. We know the truth, but yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Well, either way, we're going to be stuck here regardless. Guy beat his ass? I mean, I want him dead, so he leaves me alone. Loot his gear. If it's better than mine, take it. If it's not, Why sell it. Have, it. Either way, I plan on getting paid at the end of all this. Oh, yeah, that's just... What you... Oh, that reminds me. I need to make a call to Arnax. Well, you know, the comm channels are all working. There's not a communication embargo or anything. Yeah, he'll he'll give Arnax a call. All right. Uh, it takes a minute to go through. Uh, some nameless flunky that's face you, you recognize their face, but not <clears throat> anything else. Uh, answers. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, what do you want? That's some information Arnax might want to know. Alright, who are you? You look familiar. You know very well who I am. We've met before. Yeah, you look... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're that captain. That, yeah, 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 you're that smuggler captain. Okay. Uh, Not wrong. Let me... Hang on, I'll, pa I'll pass you over to Ludo. Uh, a moment later, the, the screen changes, and you see Ludo the Hut. Captain, how's my ship? Uh, the ship's doing fine. Good, good, good. What information is it you wanted to uh, pass to my uncle? He's in a meeting at the moment. That makes sense. Uh, well, first off, since you asked, as you usually do, it performed well outrunning a heavier, um, more heavier attack vessel as of recently. Ah, uh, good, good. Performed well. The ship too. can fight, but it's not what it's designed for. So yeah, always run away if you can. <clears throat> that being said, uh, it is readily apparent he has a mole in his organization somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you'd reported that already. Yes, however, uh, apparently it's someone who knew exactly where we were going. After we made that initial call to your uncle to get the our current plans changed. Mm-hmm. Because uh, none of us knew we were going to Kala until he told until he told us, but the schedule changed when his crew was killed. And lo and behold, we have someone literally the day we get here. Hmm. Who is this someone? A bounty hunter. <clears throat> we have some information uh, that Miko had been uh, looking around for a bounty hunter. Yes. And 
I find it hard to believe he would, out of all of the stars in the galaxy, stumble across the one location we happen to be at without someone in your uncle's organization tipping him off, probably for a payday. Hmm. As it stands right now, your man on the inside is going absolutely nowhere either. Man on the inside. Your uncle knows who I'm talking about. Hmm, I see. Uh, did our did your passenger get off at his stop? He departed without incident. However, oh, there has been an incident since. What happened? Uh you'll probably find it on the holobits here within the next ten minutes. Did you make the news, Captain? I did not know. Yeah. Oh, are we playing a guessing game, Captain? Do I do I have to guess what it is? No, I just like to build up suspense sometimes. It yeah. helps with some sales. Natural I have to keep my skills sharp. Huh? You have to keep your skills sharp. That's how you get a good payday. Long story short, uh, some imps are here, and one of their high-ranking officers uh, has been attempted to be assassinated, so the whole planet's on lockdown now. You see him kind of shrug back, and his eyes get big. And hut eyes can get quite big when they're surprised. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Thank you for calling, Captain. My uncle will definitely want to know about this. There could be yes. political ramifications. Mm -hmm. Be sure to let him know that I, that I willingly brought this information to his to his knowledge. Of course, of course. And. Whomever it is that happens to be speaking with him with Miko Nelprin rather frequently. And he just sort of raises an eyebrow. <laughs> oh, they will be uh you know, terminated. Hmm. Good. Or he, their employment will be terminated, is how he puts it. Yeah. Well, it's nice to know I'm dealing with such ruthless business acumen. We're merely professional. Aren't we all? We are as friendly as people allow us to be. <laughs> you give what you get. Same as myself. Well, very good then, Captain. I will let my uncle know. <clears throat> of course. Uh, and if you would be so kind as to keep your ear to the ground, as it were. Well, I'll have to be, considering who Miko hired to return me to Nar Shaddaa and probably a multitude of pieces. Oh, nonsense. Miko would want you in one piece so he could leave you in, a mul in multiple pieces. Mm. That's probably why he hired Corvus. Ooh. I don't know if he's the best out there, but he's definitely one of the good ones. Mm-hmm. Well, the opportunity arises, Captain. Shoot first. Oh, trust me, that is the plan. He has some interesting gear. I wouldn't mind taking a better look at it. <clears throat> Which, honestly, with with Ludo and Arnox, that's that's definitely a era talk for. I want his shit. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> That, considering how hmm, he'd, pro he'd probably done work with them before running weapons oh yeah so, they, most likely. so they they'd probably know that, that he if anybody comes after him he he is he is known for offing the offending party and looting them of all of their shit <laughs> <clears throat> But uh, 
that. But anyway, Ludo takes his leave of you. Mm-hmm. Uh. <clears throat> well. No telling how many people are about to get their employment terminated, but I feel better about it. They get what they deserve. Yeah, they messed... They <laughs> they sent literally a bounty hunter after him because they wanted extra some extra pay. He's like, well, all right. Your life is now forfeit. <laughs> Free skydiving lesson. <clears throat> First lesson, parachutes. <laughs> <clears throat> Basically, yeah. Uh, and he's fine with that. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you have not had you have not had a lot of mercy on anybody that's missed with you. He random doesn't, folks. Random folks. <clears throat> they cool. You looked at me funny. Oh well. He he has a line that you have to. It's basically like this line is as is as your life. You cross it. You cut it short. He's fine with random folks. That line is, if you come after him with lethal intent, he has absolutely no problems responding in kind. <laughs> because at that point, you just become a loot bag. <laughs> stand up guy, stand up guy. Alright, so is there anything y'all going to do uh, the rest of this day? By this point, it's, you know, 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening, probably. Uh... Ayura's going to finish his Amazon shopping. <laughs> All right, like I or said, you find, you find a couple of the, the kind of droids you're looking for. You find a couple of them for sale. Yes. Uh, to, more to the point, he's looking for four droids of three makes. Not each, but four in total. Uh, we already know the SM scavenger droid is going to be one grand. Mm -hmm. And he mostly wants that for its zero G capability. So it can like bring in halls that they happen to find out in space. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, he's also looking for two buzz droids. Basically, this is all Trade Federation like droids. That's mm -hmm. what he's most used with used to. Uh, well, no, buzz droids was separatist. Whatever. <laughs> what the Trade Federation was part of, but... Yeah. Uh, so two of them, mostly because they're really good at disassembling things. Mm -hmm. Exceptionally so. Expeditiously quickly. <laughs> um, which those are a class 2 droid? Same as an R2 unit. Okay. Effectively. I was looking at the cost, at, and I was going, okay, what would be the cost? And cost, 2000 for a Discord missile containing seven. Well, that's because <laughs> they were generally used as weapons. Yeah. You're getting, like, the civilian models, I guess? Mostly he wants it for its disassembling capability. Hmm. <laughs> to disassemble wrecks and stuff. And then... Uh... It says 900 used doesn't have like a new cost, but a Trade Federation loader droid for like heavy lifting. Okay. If if they find like a wreck on the planet, so have it lift the stuff and take it back. <clears throat> a loader droid, which is probably a class one, I'd assume. Uh, class five, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, I guess that is really specialized. Yeah, a uh, it is a class five cargo droid. Okay. To be particular. Uh, and if I'm the and the buzz droid is considered a class two repair droid for some reason. <laughs> same skills go into it, I guess. Yeah, same skills go <clears throat> backwards. But basically, yeah, he's looking for one scavenger, two buzz droids, one loader. Okay. Uh, like I said, you don't have any trouble finding it. Uh, they're in various places around the planet, but they can be delivered. Mm -hmm. That's not a big deal. Yeah. They are on planet. Mm hmm. Yeah. He'll he he'll order them. I'll go ahead and order them for how much it would be. Mm -hmm. So it'd be one thousand for the no, two thousand for the two class fives. How much for the class twos? Uh, let me grab. Equipment. All right, droids. 
me because it says like if I spend two grand, I could effectively get seven. But <laughs> so the the scavengers are class one. <clears throat> Let's see, scavengers class five. Scavenger and the cargo are class oh. fives, okay. and the buzz droids are class twos. That's right. In my head, I flipped the numbers around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but he, yeah, he doesn't class want... Class fives are a thousand apiece, and the class twos mm -hmm. are four thousand. Okay. Uh, so, now the question is, since it's two thousand for seven buzz droids, how much would it be for less than that? <laughs> Mm, you're right. Okay. Those droids are kind of weird. Uh, yeah. They're actually intended as a weapon. Mm -hmm. You said it was how much for how many? Uh, two thousand for seven. Uh, we'll say a thousand for the two. Just because they may not be in those things may not be in production anymore, so the price might be up a little bit on them. Okay, so three grand in total for the four. Alrighty. And you've got your oh. little, you know, scavenger crew ready to go. Basically, yeah. And he will schedule them for the same day all the medical supplies are supposed to get there. Okay. <clears throat> now, actually, he'll schedule them the day before, so the loader droid can start loading. <laughs> yeah. Uh... All right. I think if no one else is going to do anything, then Ozen is going to excuse herself to her room. Ponder the holocron a little bit. Actually, like, go into it for a sec. So you actually, like, turn the thing on? All right. A hologram Door appears shut. of a... Shoot, where did I write his name down at? Is he human or was he... Oh, yeah, he was human. Janos. Yeah, Genosarn. I have a card for the planet. That's so where I've got his name listed. <clears throat> so yeah, when you activate it, a hologram of him appears. Uh, greetings, how may I be of aid? Janos know about the fall? The Empire? Uh, no, he did not. Not until you told him. You know, he went to the most backwater world he could find. Great minds think alike. Uh, the hologram is delighted to hear it. If you, if you mention it to it, the hologram yeah. is delighted yeah. to, to hear it. Yes. So. He has, over the years, come to suspect that the Chancellor may have been the Sith. Hindsight is twenty twenty. No, he is the Senate. He's got a lot of hats. Some of them yeah. are hoods. <laughs> uh, I'll just, I'll just tell. Um, I'm gonna come to you for. Maybe once a week and uh, get you some training. Best I got. Very good. Though the path of the Jedi takes dedication. Yes, I was on that path all the time ago. Mm, have you stumbled? Something about losing your master and everyone you ever cared about kind of does that to people attachments are dangerous yeah yeah uh, but I will be here at any at any time that I can help you I will be here it's appreciated Janus uh, and if you haven't told the hologram your name at this point he will have asked I can't remember if you've spoken to it before or not I think this is the first time I've this is the first time I've spoken to it on the ship. Okay. 
Uh, it's uh, Ozen. Ozen Jensen. Pleasure to meet you. Uh... This is really weird because you look like you're in your like 30s at best, and I'm easily 20 years older than you. No, no, Janos looks like his current the version when you made Oh, he it. looks like his current form? Okay. Yeah. He just he spent the last few years programming it. So Compiling he, it. He okay. stayed up to date on what he looked like. Okay. That's that's different. That's good. Because yeah, yeah. that would have been awkward as hell. Very well. Uh, we'll talk again soon. I look forward to it. And he sort of bows as the hologram dissipates. Somewhere secret. Somewhere safe. Wrong universe. Give it to yes. your nephew. Send it over a mountain. <laughs> For God's sake, though, just use the eagles. Uh. All right, so the night passes uneventfully. Uh. Next day, you know, you're up and about. Uh. Ozen's got a missus from Jord. Uh. Just, just checking on how you're doing after after yesterday. He's uh, fine. We're all fine. Uh. Uh, did a report a little bit a little bit later in the message yeah he also inquires about io <laughs> oh, yeah how's that tweet like doing whatever well she didn't seem as shook up and twitchy you know sure at the end like you did uh no we're all everyone everyone's fine no one no one hurt uh you know he mentions that they've rescheduled the race for tomorrow you know you're still invited if, if you know if you want to watch it. Hope let's help a bunch of bounty hunters don't show up. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> he hopes your captain's able to work out whatever that issue is. One way or another, I'm sure he'll try. <clears throat> so, uh, what you doing for lunch? Io, you want a free lunch? No, no, no. You kids have fun. <laughs> like, no, if, Io, if this I is insist. going on. This is going like out in like the main area. She's oh, no, over. This is, this is just text messages, and then just out of nowhere, just like, <clears throat> hey, Io, you want free lunch? Go have fun with the boys. replies back, yes, lunch would be nice. Cool, and you know, he sets up a time or whatever. Mm -hmm. In the distance, Io with a kazoo, somehow Star Wars version of Careless Whisper. Mm. Uh, so what are the rest of you... Or do, the, do any of the rest of you have plans to get into? Uh, not really. I said dog really <clears throat> doesn't have much of anything he needs to do. He continues to make sure the ship is supplied. That's basically all he's going to do. Unless he's needed somewhere. Um, I was going to sweep the cargo area for more, like, trackers or whatever. Found one. I know we found it on the pallet, but like, whether there's one, there might be others. Okay, give me a search roll. <coughs> be perception search. Well, never mind, it all factors that in. Yep. Uh, 17 total. Okay, it's you don't think there's any more trackers. Okay. Just 
comes up back from the from the cargo area like ah, just doing another check there's no other uh trackers but then it's like gonna go enjoy the day you know if you need something be back before 10 o'clock i'm easily 30 years older than you i know which makes it even more hilarious Leaves and shuts the thing behind. Right. What's going on? Uh, no, I think the guys that invited her to the pit may. One of them at least might have a crush. It's uh, just fun to watch her be twitchy. Huh. Okay. Keltzer, do you have any plans? <laughs> Um, try to see if there's bounties about since, you know, they can't leave for a while. Yeah, there's a couple of bounties here in town. Uh, someone that skipped out on, uh, mm, let's see, what would it have been? Basically, basically they got a couple months behind on their rent and then skipped out without paying. Ooh. Uh, there's one guy that's you know wanted. He's 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 wanted on suspicion of murder, and like the victim's family has put some money forward for a bounty hunter to track the guy down. Uh, both of those, you know, within the city. I'll probably start out with the guy who skipped paying rent for months. Right. Let's see. That is a... Phineas Rachon, R E I C H O N. It's it's only a thousand credit bounty on him, but you know. That's fine. Uh, I don't know what Ozen has on her right now. Do what now? What the what Ozen has on her right now? But, uh, so how would Kelter start the investigation? Um, by figuring out where he, the, he last was. Okay. Uh, you get the address for where he was staying. Uh, and you find, you find like some, you know, uh, some family members of, of his that live here in town. Mm hmm. Um, she would check to see if he's there. Okay. Uh, you find the address for his mother. Mm hmm. Uh, from what you, you know, from what you find out, his father passed years ago, so it's, you know. It should just be his mother living here. <clears throat> you can approach that apartment if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to approach and she's going to check. See if he's been by. Oh, uh, you knock on the door, she answers. and Seems quite alarmed to have, you know, somebody in full armor standing there. Understandably so. It's just kind of a... <gasps> and then she's, she shuts the door. What do you want? Just want to know if you've been in contact with your son. Oh, well, he calls me every week. Do you know where he's at? No. Uh-huh. Why do you want to know? Just, um, trying to fix something. 
and I need his help with it. Oh, you you may have the wrong guy then. He's he, he yeah, yeah. I love him, but he's not very handy. <laughs> oh, this wasn't about being handy at all. He owes rent money. I, I'm I'm sure he'll pay it first chance he gets. He, he, sure he's, he he, he's had a bad he's had a a, a, a streak of bad luck with employment. I mean that happens, but you don't just skip out on rent after not paying for months. Well, you know, uh, uh, I tell you what, I, I, I'll have him, uh, I'll have him call the landlord and, and see if they can work out some kind of payment plan or or, 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 or something. Would, would that be a, all right? That's not up to me. Well, couldn't you like not look for him for a little bit while he? I don't, I don't really know how bounty things work. I mean, that's not what I get paid for to not look. Just like your son looking for employment, this is my employment. The, the so. door cracks back open. Uh, 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 do they really have enough money on him to get a Mandalorian's attention? Obviously, yeah. Uh, of course, she's taking shitty jobs. Tell her are, that. Are you slumming <laughs> it? Are you, are you a bad Mandalorian? Is that why you're doing this? <laughs> no. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe we could talk about it. Would, would you like to come in? Talk about what? I'm not the one that put the bounty on his head. Uh, well, but you're the one looking for him. Yeah. I'm getting paid to look for him. And to bring him in. Uh, alive, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, the, and the bounty was very clear on alive. This is not a life yeah. and death sort of thing. Yeah, no, she would be, she would say it he's no use to anybody dead. Oh, okay. Just scenario, just plunk him over the head. Well, that's what stun settings are for. Bloop. Uh uh Well, I I'm I'm sorry you came all this way out for for, for nothing, uh Can I get you something to drink? No, I'm good. Uh, give me a perception roll. Perception. Waiting for that scene from uh, oh, let me go right. where he just jumps out the window. It's like, sorry, he was just here. All right. <laughs> I'm just grabbing my dice real quick. Out of my head. <laughs> I love that movie. God, I love that movie. <laughs> All right. Uh, she for somebody that slammed the door in your face, she really wants you to come inside now. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that she's trying to stay kind of locked on your helmet, but she keeps glance. She keeps kind of briefly glancing over your shoulder. <clears throat> and then she'll pull out her blaster and aim it right behind her to see if anybody's back there. Nobody, nobody was like creeping up on you. Mm -hmm. But like down the steps, you see somebody getting into a, you know, moving like moving like they're trying to be very quiet, getting into a speeder. And she will head out there and be like, "Thanks for the information. Thanks for ratting out your your son." Uh, when you speak loudly like that, 
the guy getting in the, into the speeder turns around and you get a you get a clear look on his face. It's the bounty. At which point he stops being subtle, and just jumps in, slams the door, cranks. And I shoot at the speeder to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, all right, give me an attack roll. Pretty sure I got speeder stats. Just right <laughs> I'm glad I have this headset that 19. I have now. What was that? I had previously, you would have heard Judas Priest in the background because my dad's working on something. Uh, 28? Mm. Okay, I was wrong. That's only ships. So a 28, and he's going to try to avoid it. Ah, oh, land speeders 58. All right. Quick question. Mm -hmm. So you said he was getting in when yeah. she said she was going to shoot. Would he have time to get it cranked up and be able to actually evade a blaster shot? Uh, you know, that's a fair point. That is a fair point. I mean, I imagine that rule's going to get used on us, too, but I figured it's something <laughs> I should uh, mention. So, yeah, the you hear the you hear the speeder charge up where, you know, he's cranked it, basically. Uh, uh, let's see. So, yeah, we'll say it's a sitting target. So go ahead and roll damage. Oh, speeders are, speeders are not very sturdy. Uh -uh. Nope. You said roll. Yeah, damage. roll the damage. Roll, roll the damage for your blaster. Okay, it got a three on its strength roll. That's not great. <laughs> hey. I had to double that. Twenty-five. Yeah, it, it cranked up. It lifted off the ground, and you bait you is you did the equivalent of putting a putting a shot through its engine block. And it just sits back down, just thump. A little bit of smoke trails out the back. Uh. He looks back over at you. Hey, that was my mom's speeder. And you shouldn't have gotten into it, buddy. For a brief second, it looks like he's about to try to jump out and run. But, you know, realizes that you've basically got the, you know, you've basically already drawn on him. And it's one of those <laughs> open top speeders, so it's not like he's really got, you know, any cover. Come on now, we can we we can talk about this, can't we? You gotta talk to the person you owe. Uh, okay, we can go talk to him. Shall him in. All right. So you you know zip tie him or cuff him or whatever it is you do. Mm-hmm. Though I'm picturing her having a brief moment of panic as she realizes, I've never taken a minute alive before. <laughs> how, how do you do this part? I never thought I'd get this far. Usually it's disintegrations. I just sweep them up and take them in. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, you don't have any any problems starting in the bounty. Because, you know, this is through the local bounty hunters guild guy, so, you know. There's kind of a middleman that'll take him and and actually turn him over. Uh, but 
you know, so by the end of the day, you know, you've got your, uh, how much that site was? thousand credits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's deposited into your account, you know, it's lickety split. Uh, well, no, this is Bounty Hunter Guild. They give you physical credits. But... Yep. Uh, well, this is going on. Ozen, you have hit it out. Yes. Was there anything you were going to do in town before you met up with Jord? Just kind of like, kind of meander for a bit. Uh, okay. Avoiding the... anyone who <clears throat> remotely looks like they belong to the Empire. Uh, so yeah, meander through the town. A lot of festivities still going on. Um, you do pass a lot of people that are in conversation about what happened. Uh, people that are nervous. There's almost there's like a slight undertone of tension, though everybody's trying to everybody's still trying to kind of carry on with the party atmosphere. That sound like they're afraid of like an empire retaliation. Yes, or this being kind of the excuse the empire might need to roll on in. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not everybody. Some people are legitimately just you know still in the party mood. Uh, obviously, the kids running through the streets with balloons and whatnot and aren't being affected by it. Uh, you know, the street vendors are still going. You do notice more security, you know, kind of openly moving around. But they're still locals and not imps. They're still locals. They're not really harassing anybody. They're there's just, just there. there's just a noticeable higher presence of them. Yep. And yeah, she'll just walk around for a little bit. That does put her at ease that they're it's all local security. You know, Corpsec is their own kind of corrupted, but. Mm -hmm. They're not literally evil and destroying planets. They're just <clears throat> after corpse corpse like interests, uh, and they have no no reason to be interested in you, which is the important part. Exactly. For now, uh, yeah. So yeah, you meet Jord, uh basically at the uh, hotel he's staying at, which is. Uh, uh, it's basically across the street from the raceway. Mm. You know, the raceway was built on part of the old Imperial base. Uh, so, you know, think your typical kind of big military base. There's lots of, <clears throat> lots of land there. And big sections of it they've started repurposing for things like the raceway. So, you know, big hotel, civic, you know, big hotel, convention center sort of thing. Mm. Uh just gonna tell uh before I get there I'll be I'll just like tell the captain I'll be like uh yeah I'm gonna be at the Raceway Arms uh hotel it's where we're having lunch so if you need me I'll be there <sighs> all right don't forget to take a condom what's the rule Good. no glove no love he goes right, back so to his tablet take off my comm unit. <laughs> I'm picturing little force shield generators. This is what they would use for Star Wars. Mm. Jesus fucking Christ. I hate that. That's actually cursed. It's like a little ring and it generates a... Anyway. <clears throat> That's what we do on Tuesdays, y'all. Welcome to Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Are you shocked? Have then clearly you've never been here before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kidding. So yeah, you get to the lobby of the hotel. George's already down there, dressed mm -hmm. all spiffy. Uh, you know, y'all do the little chit chat. And, uh, you know, and then heads out in the street. He, he's telling you about this restaurant just down. You know, uh, you know, just just around the corner. But you know, look like a nice sit down place. Uh, Hell yeah. You know, you go in. It's, you know, it's the equivalent of a, of a decent steak place. It's 
So I guess I guess that would be Nerf in the Star Wars universe. Nerf steak, yeah. Uh, yeah. So chit chatting, you know, he's talking about being you know being excited to finally get the race on. Uh, uh, I'm excited for you. You know, uh, you know, and he talks about how messed up the stuff was yesterday. You know. Yeah, that bounty hunter was a real piece of work. He's, oh, I was talking about the assassination attempt, but yeah, the bounty hunter just adds to the weirdness. You don't think he was involved, do you? You know, I've seen, we I've connected weirder things before. I don't think. I I don't I try not to assume people are going to cause an assassination attempt just to bring get a bounty. Yeah, that does seem a little extreme. It's a little yeah, especially if especially if they just want it to be questioned. Now we can't leave, so. Uh. Give me, give me a perception roll. Flat perception. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Uh. Good roll. Twenty-three. Okay. Uh. Three off from max roll. So y'all are chewing the fat. You have you you having a pretty good time. Uh, a little bit literally chewing the fat. Sometimes. Uh, you know, you have I imagine Ozen deflects any questions about her past. You know, just off in a off in a backwoods planet, learned I was good at you know, using my eyes to see things. Just made a career out of it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what he asked. You know, well, where are you from? You know, how'd you get into this kind of... Because you basically told him you're, like, security for the ship, yeah. right? so... But it's it's less security of, like, you know, hands-on, because they have a... We have a literal Mandalorian. It's more making sure... Mm -hmm. It's public information. Don't give me that. <laughs> no, it's like, I have an army. We have a Mando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I don't have to be hands on. It's just it's more the uh, just scanning people and making sure they're on the up and up. And as you say that, you like you know you like glance over at somebody walking out. You know, like you're demonstrating. Oh yeah, you know, uh, keep an eye on. And you recognize the woman you see walking out. Uh, it's somebody that had just basically just paid her ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's dressed. I mean, it's like a regular person. Yeah. You know, you know, mid-level businesswoman. Yep. Okay. You know, whatever the Star Wars equivalent is of it, like a pantsuit. <laughs> I had the same uh, a pantsuit. <laughs> yeah. It's just a pantsuit. Uh, um. Maybe with the maybe with the like seventies and eighties padded shoulders they used to put in. You know, <clears> they say they're like it's like jackets. a the yeah. It's either padded or like spiked. <clears throat> it's not spiked. Uh. But uh, yeah. But you recognize her face. You mm -hmm. you you saw her just yesterday. Yep. She making as me. <clears throat> uh, that's a good question. I rolled pretty fucking her. high on that, so like, Does I'm I'm gonna use that for as much as I can. No, she does not seem to pay you any attention. Yeah, I'm just uh, clock her, and then I'm busy doing something else. So you recognize the potential Inquisitor that you met. Uh, you see her walk outside. 
Uh, you see her cross the street, so she's on the same side of the street as the raceway now. Uh-huh. Uh, but she starts walking down to where there's like still some construction stuff. <clears throat> and the last you see of her, just as she kind of get to the edge of the window, you see her kind of glance around and duck into the construction site. Interesting. <clears throat> Sorry. Take another big bite out of some nerve steak. Uh... Yeah, and you realize that while you were distracted, he was he was in the middle. He had started some story about from his childhood, you know. Since y'all were exchanging, you know, storyline, he would tell you where he was from. I'll I'll get back into the story and use like context clues to see where I am and sift through it. You're kind of like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry about your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Now, back on the ship, what is Io and the captain doing? Well, and Doc. I don't mean to leave Doc out. Uh, well, the, I love how like I don't get a name. I'm just the captain. Is this because I have the complicated name? Yes. <laughs> I keep forgetting exactly how I'm supposed to pronounce it. <clears throat> I mean, that's fair. Hey, Ira, though. Is it Ira? <clears throat> Ira? Iria. Iria. <clears throat> Iria, yeah. I'll write down a pronunciation key at some point. Uh, uh, re, uh, re. All right, maybe I get it now. <clears throat> mostly, I was probably just reading or just mostly just hanging out. She's like, I'm, I'm not gonna go a wandering. If there's potential of a bounty hunter being around. Well, there's always that potential, unfortunately. Well, she didn't say this out loud. She's just oh. hanging around on the ship <laughs> reading or something. My bad. R2 uh, seems, your, your R2 unit seems to be sulking. What's the matter? Are you jealous because the captain's getting new toys? Uh, it whistles back at you. No, I'm I'm upset because I'm stuck on the ship. Everybody else has got to go out into town. <laughs> Even the other droid on the ship got to go out in town. When we get back to drop off the medicines, I'll take you out. I'm going to hold you to that. That's fine. He wants to see the races. Well, no, back when we go to drop off the medicines. It was, was not this planet. They know what you look like. Can't join. You can't go, leave. Well, that and there's, um, like she said, like I said, bounty hunter. She's hanging near the ship. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I only get to see the planet where they use where they use sticks and rocks to make stuff okay next fun planet we go to i'll at least make sure to get you yeah. out of the you know the docking bays he rolls away i whistle, will repaint whistle, whistle you in like a low tone hey R2. i'll just repaint you would you like the upside to what's happening on this planet Sure. Makes an inquisitive whistle. You'll have four new droids you can be in charge of. Hmm. That seems to be <clears throat> about R2-T9, king of the droids. <laughs> <clears throat> and, and honestly, given what R2 is, being an astromech, he honestly would kind of leave R2 as the de facto supervisor of the other droids. <clears throat> I'm sure it'll get along with R the Buzz droids great since they were, you know, designed to take out Astromix. R2 units are known for being sassy. He'll be fine. Yeah. <clears throat> 
I thought Buzzdoor's just designed to take out anything. Yeah, probably so. I just specifically remember them attacking R2. Well, yeah, they did tear apart uh, the R2 unit in a uh, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan yeah. ship. Yeah, but they were also ripping his ship apart in the process. Uh. All right. Uh, Ozan, your lunch, you know, starts to wrap up. Uh. You know, George seems to be content to sit there and just talk for as long as, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I'll let him talk as much as he wants. He's paying for my steak. I'm talk as much as he wants. Uh, throughout the meal, you've noticed a couple of other people come by and duck down that same, you know, in, into the uh, construction area at the same time, at the same spot. Do all of them look exactly the same? They're all just kind of non, you know, descriptively dressed. So it's not clones. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the people all look different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the rest of them are guys, but other than that. All right. Uh, then, yeah, she'll. In her head, she's doing the. Yep. But she's not saying it out loud. She's being calm, kind. Uh, but but he, eventually he, he catches on to, oh, okay, I think she's ready to go. You know, and y'all have been sitting there talking for a while, so. Yeah. You know, he pays the tab. Uh, I'll, 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 you know, touch him on the shoulder and be like, this is a lovely time. Thank you very much. I feel like I've really gotten to know you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, this was nice. Uh, you know, I hope you can make it out to the race tomorrow. Do my best. <clears throat> I hope to see. I hope to reserve my spot in the pit. Oh yeah, the crew knows. So, you know, keep the door open for you. That's uh, a little smart. So, do you walk back to him to his with him to his hotel, or have you got something else to do? And yeah, you know, y'all split out in front of the restaurant. Um, I think. How, where's the construction area in relation to the uh, hotel? So, the hotel is around the corner from the restaurant. And the construction okay. site is, you know, across the road and down, still within sight. Okay. You know, through, through their front window. Um, Ozen, will, Ozen will walk him to <sighs> hit the hotel and just say, uh, well, I've, I've got some other things I need to take care of. But it was very lovely to have, have lunch with you. Oh, yeah. You have a good day. Stay safe. Uh, there's an awkward moment, like maybe he thinks about saying something else, but then just kind of nods and goes in. If he if he turns back, she's just smiling politely. Uh, if he does a dramatic like uh, love story, love movie like turn, like goes up, opens the door, looks back, just smiling politely. Uh, he does kind of glance back over his shoulder as he's as he's. As he's walking in. But he doesn't do like a full front run. And then he closes the, as soon as he closes the door, uh, she'll kind of double back towards the construction. She's not going to, she's only going to go in like part ways, kind of see what's going on. She's not going to like go all the way in. Just see what she can glean at a cursory glance. <coughs> all right. <laughs> So the area's got some kind of cheap fencing up uh, mm-hmm. with, like, tarps kind of over the fence so you don't, don't see in. Uh... But I definitely saw where they where they entered. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's where two of the tarps met up, uh, and when you slide in there, there's a gap in the fence. Mm-hmm. Uh... Intending to keep myself quiet. Yeah, you you know you you step just you know kind of just inside. Uh, and you're looking around. Uh, of course, the ground's torn up. It's all you know dirty and muddy. Uh, and you see several sets of tracks heading off. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
best you can tell, they kind of walk past the actual construction that's going on. Okay, so they're, like I get the sense they're using this as like a shortcut. Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, it, it doesn't look like they're going into the actual area where they're constructing something. Mm, okay. It's like they're just kind of circling around the the building. So I'll continue forward. Uh, I'm eyes are open. If there's anything that requires me to like have my eyes closed, like another like tarped off area, then I will not go in there. But I'm just gonna keep going forward bit by bit. Okay. Being quiet, but... I'm being attentive. No, the only really tarped area was the the the, area, the section of fence that's like facing the road. Right. You know, it's like they're trying to keep kind of the eyesore blocked from the road, but yeah, yeah. Uh, the back of the construction area isn't isn't fenced at all. It just opens up further into what used to be the the uh, imperial base. And from the looks of it, this is one of those bases that you know it had several buildings on the surface, but probably most of the stuff was underground. Okay. Uh, and you follow the tracks back, and it, it looks like they're just heading to that back edge. And eventually you get to an area that's like grassed. Yeah, so they're, they're not leaving as noticeable a track. Uh, the grass is a little grown up, so you could probably still kind of figure out uh, where they're going if you want to give me a uh, search roll. What I'm good at. Twenty total. Uh, yeah, they've all basically followed the same path. So there's a there's kind of a stomp down bit of grass. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's like a door or something that that like, if it's like a door or like a hidden uh, like little <sighs> opening in the grass or something, then uh, that's what she's mostly looking for. But if she sees like uh, just the path they're going. You walk on, you see like a, a slight mound, and there's like a paved walkway that runs and kind of dips down. You know, it, it runs off kind of to the side, you know, of where you're, you're coming up from. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can tell at a distance that's going to be an entrance to the underground, some of the underground section. Yeah, that's that's literally what she's looking for. She's like, okay, entrance. You know, it's it's right on the path of where this track is going. So I see entrance, and that's mental note for later. Going back. All right, so that's when you head back. Yes. Uh, how close do you get? You know, I, you get up I, close enough to confirm that it's a door, or I get close enough to clock that it's an entrance, and then uh, okay. But it, like, it's one of those things where like. I don't need to see a door. I know what the entrance looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, see, you see the mound and the, the walkway I see and see the, where the walkway dips. So yeah, you put I, two I two kind of infer okay. from there, like, yeah. Okay. All right, then I'm you get back I'm not going to go to the door where there's some fucking stormtroopers there, like, just sitting there like, hey, what's so, going on, buddy? <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, you, yeah, you, go back you to pull the back to the street with no trouble. Yep, and then I'll head back to the, um, I'll head back to the ship. Okay. I make a make I make a point to like wipe my boots on the on the pavement. As don't soon as track, we, as soon as I get to yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to track into the ship, but also, you know, just in case. Uh, these are my so, these are my date boots. So you get back to the ship. Uh... Uh, Kelter, you you have beat him back to the or beat her back to the ship. Mm hmm Yeah, you're in there counting your credits. One, two, three. Uh. uh she'll see that she's walked in and be like, "So, how was your evening?" Afternoon. It's, it's only like lunch. I was gonna say it's Afternoon. it's only like two tops. Oh, date was lovely. Um, he's a remarkable man. 
I can't tell you much about him. Besides, you know. That. <clears throat> um, got a little sidetrack. But. I think we're good. That's good. The imps are using an old base of theirs. Oh? Yeah. Saw a bunch of them go into a a base that had seen uh, that has been discontinued in a construction site. Hmm. On a twenty, would I have heard the, like footsteps going back and forth in that area in that paved area? Uh, no, you did not hear anybody walking around. Okay. Fair enough. The damnedest thing. I saw, like, one jump in, two, and before I knew it, like, there's three or four people all going in the same weird direction. All business casual <clears throat> going into a tarp in a construction area. Uh -huh. The only reason I know they're empire adjacent is the, uh, one of the, huh, one of them was, uh, you know, the fancy ones with the little tube thingy. <sighs> Are we all the ship at this point? The two thing? Yeah, everybody's owned the ship. Okay. Now, whether y'all yeah. are, whether y'all all rush down to the door to ask Ozen about her date is up to y'all. <laughs> nah. Honestly. I'm not yeah, saying, yeah. I'm not, like, hiding what I'm saying, though. So, like, yeah. anyone with an earshot would probably hear it. <sighs> Do you mean an Inquisitor? Is that what they're called? Yeah, yes. That. Jedi Hunters. Yeah. I recognize. I just recognize her from uh, me and me and Io uh, saw her. Hmm. So what one of them is doing here? The one pantsuit lady. Yeah. Okay. Something's not. Do you have the? Do you have the holovid from of the assassination attempt? I didn't save it. No, you could probably find it. Yeah, it's up. easy enough to pull up. Oh, double checking. This pantsuit lady is not with them. Confirm. Just double checking that. Yeah, she she <clears> is. <throat> when the assassination went down, she was not there. You know, you see, you see the guy that got shot. You see the four stormtroopers. You see the local, you know, some of the local corpse set guys and, and all that, but the troop. Well, so the troop minus the minus the Inquisitor looks exactly the same. Correct. Hi, oh. do you remember the the lady that stepped up in front to with the bounty hunter? Yeah. She's not in. She's not in the hollow vid. Shitty bodyguard. I doubt it. But... Wasn't there when the assassination attempt happened and didn't prevent the assassination attempt? Maybe she was part of the assassination attempt. Kind of what I'm thinking, maybe, but it's a weird way to go about it. I mean, there'd be much easier ways to kill someone you're masquerading to protect if that was what you were intending to do. Well, she was one of the ones that walked into the construction area, and that's the only reason I recognize her. Uh, so the only reason I know it's their empire adjacent. Something's not adding up. In the end, it doesn't really matter. 
Well, it is keeping us from leaving, so... Probably not going to resolve itself. She's not the one keeping us from leaving. It's whoever did the assassination. I mean, eventually they're going to have to let people go. You know, <clears throat> preventing trade from going off-world and stuff. It would just upset the local economy and potentially any relationship they could have with the planet. Hmm. Or they can just swoop in and try to take over. Give them time. Wouldn't be the first time. And like the first time, not a damn thing is going to change either. Just the corruption would be a little bit more blatant. As per usual. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Something just... have a have a really off feeling about it. Wonderful. There's some medication in the cabinet. Just a bottle that says whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> you should try getting some rest. At least an adequate amount of sleep. I suggest <clears> eight <throat> hours. If Doc runs any kind of scan, uh, he'll see, or they'll see that Ozen has like an elevated BPM. Mm. Oh yeah, no. Doc's already been like at the moment you started showing concern. <clears throat> Doc had already started like doing s just like s <laughs> quick <laughs> scan, just like let's see what's going on. Yeah, uh, that's just like elevated heart rate. Yeah, no. At that point, Doc would be like, hmm. Knowing your t kind of person, I would also suggest taking some calming tea. It might help slow heart rate. But that is only a suggestion. What does that mean? Knowing your person? It's a weird turn of phrase. To be fair, he's a weird droid. Yeah. <sighs> Do you have tea available? Yes, we should. Let me check the medicine cabinets and see if I keep a small supply. Alright. That's probably in the lounge area. But... I mean, he would check... Out of protocol habit, he would check there first and be like, hmm, where else would it be stored? <laughs> Classic right. Metal Gear Solid Guard. An hour or so after Ozzy gets back, uh, there's a, effectively a knock at the door. Check the ring cam. Uh, there's a couple of guys in corpse sick uniforms standing out there. Cap. Who did what now? Was it me? I've been here all day. Uh-huh. Ozen, what did you do? I went on a date with a fellow person my age. <sighs> He'll walk over to the intercom. Ring it. Yes, how may I help you? Are you the captain of this ship? Oh boy. Who's asking? Uh, they identify themselves as corpus sick. They hold their, their they hold their ID kind of up to the camera. Step back. They take a couple steps back. He'll, he'll open the <laughs> he'll open the door. <clears throat> he very noticeably does have a hand on his pistol though. Uh, may I help you? The the guy standing behind, kind of the spokesman, clearly sees you with the hand on the pistol, and his hand kind of drifts back there. Uh, but the spokesman, who's got a data pad in his hand, is kind of like, well, 
no need for that, Captain. Well, to be uh, frank, I don't know who you are, and there's a bounty hunter here that's after me, so. That you could. Sounds like any a one of, Well, any one of you <laughs> could be him, so. Just in case. Now, how may I help you? Uh, he turns the data pad around, <clears throat> and there is an image uh, of Ozen cleaning mud off of her boots. Trapes around. Just, you know, kind of on the sidewalk, scraping mud off her boot. I mean, you know. Uh, uh, is this one of your crew? I see someone scraping mud off of their shoes. Why does this... Why do you need me? We just need to speak with this with this person. Uh... <sighs> Fuck around and find out, I guess. Ozen! Huh? Get down here. Not father, you're the captain. She takes her time. Once she comes into view and Corpse Egg probably obviously sees her, <laughs> the captain's just going to lean against the wall and... I owes a half dozen or so mm. steps behind Ozen with like a bowl of popcorn. Can I share that? Get over. Uh, Help you, gentlemen. Yes. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, we had reports of someone entering a construction area that was off limits. Uh, you know, he and he shows you the picture. You know, it's you clean your boots when you came back out. Okay. Uh, Why did you walk into the, this restricted area? It's a monkey see, monkey do situation. What do you mean? Had a moment of uh... my curiosity got the better of me, but my curiosity was sated when I found it was just a regular site. Uh, you said monkey see, monkey do. Well, who do? You, what did you see that made you do? <clears throat> Some other people look like they were in business casual. Okay, it was a so weird you, thing. So I wanted to investigate it. So you explain that you saw like four of the people duck in there, wondering what was going on. Yeah. They kind of look at each other when you say that. <clears throat> Is there like a recognition that in their head? In Not their really. Uh, you know, they had a report. Okay. You know, somebody saw you either go in or come out. Uh, <laughs> and from talking with them, you find out that this was essentially God, like a traffic. Snitches. You, you you find out the picture is basically from like a traffic drone that, you know, just... Sure. It just happened to be passing through at that point. You know. Think of it like the, you know, Google Cam car or Google Maps car. Yeah, yeah. Past you kind of just thing. about to say you got caught by Google Maps. You know. Mm -hmm. But they have, a, they, they have, you know, a, a little swarm of these drones that just run around the city. Sure. You know, more to spot accidents than anything. Just uh, saw other people go by curious and okay, uh, they ask you for you know as much of a description as you can give of these other people uh just regular dudes and business casual was really weird to go from this high-end establishment to whatever the hell uh, yeah like like a strip mall shopping kind of thing that was going up or something uh <clears throat> So, you know. Anything else? Uh, they write you a citation. Uh, it's just a warning. They're like, you know, when you when you see a restricted area sign, you know, please respect it. It's for your own protection kind of thing. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, it's basically that you don't do that again. <clears throat> Slap on the wrist, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll have to actually, you know, ticket you or charge you with trespassing or something if you do it again. Mm. Uh, you know, and they thank you for the information on, on these other people. They'll, they'll look into that. It's odd. Be careful. Uh, but, you know, then they take the leave. Uh... So going into the next day, 
Who all is going to the race? <clears throat> Insta promised that she would go, so. Um, Kelsa would go. In full armored regalia? Yep. <laughs> it's fair. I'm here for a I'll keep an eyeball on the ship this time, since I went I mean, last time. She'll have her helmet in her hand, but more or less. This situation. I'm here for a relaxing day at the races. In full armor with a shotgun strapped to your back? Eh. Yes. It helps me relax. <laughs> I feel relaxed. Who's going to mess with me? Nobody. Basically. I feel safe in knowing no one is going to bother me. Uh. <clears throat> so you get to the race there, there's some extra security outside <clears throat> so once you're inside you know everything seems to be pretty normal uh, no Imperials wandering around today though I'm with the White Witch Look along mm-mm uh, you walk in, George's like, Ozen! Oh, I see you brought your ship muscle today. You gonna be ready if that well, other, you... one, other bounty hunter pops up, huh? You didn't have to say it like that, but yeah. Uh, and he introduces himself to Kelser, because I don't think y'all have met yet. Kelser? Kelser? George? George? Kelser? Oh yeah, pleased to meet you. You know, shake his hand. Pleased to meet you too. Yeah, you know, he that's Thal over there. Thal, you know, raises that, you know, turns away from the pit crew. He's always doing, you know, throws up a hand. Okay, hi. Uh, you know, they're geared up, get ready for the race. Uh, you know, they've got a screen up where they're playing the pre-show stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about, you know, the race finally, re finally ready to get the race underway, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, you see a lot of the stuff going on that was going on a couple of days before with their prepping the ship. They've got, they've already got the their mech, uh, astro mech loaded up in the in the witch. Yep. Also, uh, it'll help out with like some of the prep too, it, where she can. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just. If if anything, just an extra set of hands versus like actual knowledge of what she's doing. All right. Once again, give me a perception checks. So everybody's in there. So this would be Ozen and Kelter. Mm-hmm. Great. Not again. Is it? I'm trying to. Okay, perception. Okay. Really gotta move it. these games to like the other end of town. Well, you know, it's a decommissioned military base. It was all this open space. Right there in the city, I mean, or at the edge of the city, so. 15? Okay. Ozen? 11. Uh. You, Keltzer, you hear... I guess I should roll for George. Wow, George is not observant. Uh, you hear something coming from the hallway. Uh, like somebody, I don't know, blowtorching through something. Which, you know, there are other, other you know, pits uh, up and down there. So it might just be somebody using a tool. Though you haven't heard any other, anything else like this. Hmm. Should we look to see where the noise is coming from? You look down the hallway... 
and there is a down the hallways a ways there is a circle being burned through the floor close to us oh 15 or 20 feet down the down the hallway away from you uh ozen yes she will point at the uh hole uh, about that time that little that little circular section of floor drops and everybody hears the the, the crash uh draw my baton Kelter, you see a woman leap out of the hole. She will pull her blaster out. Uh, the woman immediately turns around, reaches down, and just hit, you know, takes somebody's arm and helps pull, start pulling people out of the hole. You hear what sounds like some blaster fire echoing down from in, in there somewhere. Uh, the woman notices you, is like, This doesn't concern you. Sure it doesn't. That looks like it definitely does. Uh, so she helps uh, two guys out. And it's like she's reaching out for another one and you hear, you know, you hear a blaster fire and suddenly you hear somebody go, uh At which point, she, at which point the woman just go, kind of goes, "Damn it!" and stands up. This pet suit. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ozen, you, you recognize <laughs> all these. Uh, the pants suit is like you know dirty and stuff, like you know. Someone's been infiltrating a base. Like they've been crawling, like, like, like they've out. been crawling through a crawl, like they've been going, you know, working their way through a crawl space or something. Yeah, weird. Uh, I'll. Elbow Kelser and be like, those are the apps. Ah. Uh, now, most of the pit crew has stepped out behind, you know, behind the two of you to see what's going on. Uh, Thal points at the woman. That's a lightsaber in her hand. Oh, you mean her. Uh, what color is it? Is it red? Well, it wasn't lit when she leapt out. As gotcha. soon as he, as soon as he says that, she goes ahead and lights it up. Y'all need to just, you know, she basically said, just step back into your pit. What color is the lightsaber? Red. Okay. Or crimson, or whatever, whatever specific specific one they used. Uh, and they start kind of uh, backing down the hallway away from you. No, I'm not going to chase them. Uh, Might snitch if, you know, a uh, corpse that guy comes by. That's it. Okay. Uh... As they start backing away from you, uh, you hear feet running. Some corpse sex security guys run around, pointing that way. Just immediately. Well, no, they're, they're coming up. You know, you're here. Then it's them. Uh -huh. The corpse sex guys are on the other side of them. Okay. So they're they're sandwiching them anyway. Uh, yes, it's a it's a you them corpse sex sandwich. Gotcha. Uh. As soon as the corpse guys see them, they open fire. Uh, one of the other, one of the guys with her immediately goes down. The other one returns fire. You see a couple of corpse guys go down. Uh, uh, the woman starts slapping blaster bolts out of the way. Uh, but a lot of stray shots are coming down the hallway at the rest of you. Are the ricochet good enough to like try to hit us? Cause uh, I'm 
ducking out of the way if that ha when that happens. Uh, like after the first one. Yeah. So anyway, sir, uh, both of you are going to take potentially take shots. Are you dodging? Yeah. Yep. Oh, hell yeah, I'm dodging. Just, just checking. You don't have to. All right, so give me a dodge okay. roll, Ozen. I got a nine extra from whatever else the range is. Okay. Exceedingly hard to hit someone with the with the ricochet bolt, blaster bolt as I. Well, it's not ricocheted. You know, she's the woman was blocking the ones that were going to hit her. Some of them just missed everybody and just went downfield. And y'all happened to be downfield. Oh, even even more even more of a cause for it to miss. Uh. So yeah, I think this will be medium range. <laughs> So yeah, you get missed. One goes at Rappy, or at Kiltzer, I should say. Hey. They're shooting Rappy. Dodge, right? Right. Twenty six. Oh yeah, yeah, it misses you by a mile. Uh, the nameless, <clears throat> faceless pit crew just all shriek and, and jump in there. Uh, but you do hear you do hear kind of a grunt behind you, as as somebody has taken a, a blaster bolt. You hear Jord call out Thal's name. And out of the corner of your eye, you see him kind of dragging Thal back into the pit. Uh, the two remaining imps are kind of moving back in your direction now. Not like they're being, not like they're, you know, <clears throat> aggressively coming at you. They're just being pushed back. Uh, the one guy's kind of taking cover behind the woman. But he keeps glancing back at y'all to see what y'all are doing, because, you know. If you're saying something, uh, Jeremy, you were muted. Right. It's like, I'm not, yeah, I'm just, I'm running back and helping, helping them uh, carry Thaw. Okay. But I was saying, like, I'm not, I'm not harrying them. I'm just making sure my friend doesn't fucking die. Yeah, well, if y'all, if y'all duck back into the, the, the pit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kelter, you're stepping back into the pit as well. Well, in that case, you know, they, they keep an eye on you as they're passing your, as, as they're passing you in the pit, and then like when they, once they get past your pit, from the sound of it, they just turn around and take off, you know. Uh, the sort corpse set guys run through. Uh, one of them notices that there's an injury, and you hear him on his comms. You know, injured civilian in pit, whatever the number, whatever number of pit it is. Driver. Uh, yeah, he don't pay. He's not paying any attention. That's literally. He looks, and you see him grabbing his comms and start talking as he keeps keeps running. Uh, uh, shortly thereafter, like the EMTs basically show up, uh, you know, you, Ozan and, and Jord have got Thal propped up, uh, you know, he took a shot to the shoulder, you know, doesn't look like it's going to be lethal or anything. Mm. Uh... You know, but they give him a once over. Uh, they're, uh, you know, they're packing him up to, you know, essentially take him to take him to the, the hospital. Uh, 
Uh, and, you know, he's telling Jord, uh, you know, you know, it's going to be okay. It's just, you know, it's just his arm. They'll slap him in some back day. He'll be, you know, he'll be up and around in a day or two. Uh, and, the, you know, the EMTs are giving kind of that same same report. Uh, and they go rolling him off, and George is sitting there going, we picked the wrong vacation spot. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, me, me, aside from me, aside from meeting you, uh, I mean, y'all, uh, yeah, this has kind of been a wash. Uh, and the race is in like a half hour. I'd take it out myself, but I've I've, I've had this inner ear problem the last couple of years, so. What do you need to captain it? Uh, just somebody that can pilot. Not me, that's for sure. I'm a lot of things. I'm not a pilot or yep, a cap yep. a pilot. Yeah, but y'all are a crew of a ship. Do y'all have a pilot? Yes, theoretically. Is he any good? Theoretically, <laughs> if he if if you are paying him, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. We we you know. Yeah, we 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 split <clears throat> the uh, uh. You know, we'd split any winnings with him, of course. Uh, I'll. You you're gonna have to talk to him about that. That's he's really weird about it. I'll call it. Do a direct line to the captain. What'd you break this time? Uh, it was some weird bitch with a lightsaber. That, that's neither here nor there. Um, what a way to start a conversation. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I in the back room. You broke the weird bitch with a lightsaber. <laughs> Impressive. Over my knee like a stick. Arr. You want to make some money? <sighs> I mean, yeah. They shot the, the the pilot who was going to originally uh, race, uh, got uh, took some blaster fire. So uh, you need You're a pilot. You're calling me a pilot, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Yep. Do you or do you not want to split winnings? His <laughs> credits. Hmm. <sighs> like I said, you can talk to him about. However the heck you're going to split the credits, I'm just <clears throat> putting the call forward. I'm just a liaison. Have them send me the specs of their speeder and I'll take a look. Oh, I can do that. I, I will literally do it since... Excuse okay. Me, me Stinger going... It's this, the... this thing is, yeah, but say, is it considered a, yeah, is it considered it's a repulsor a lift or technically starship? <laughs> eh, in in the first edition of the rules, the pilot's pretty much just pilot. Okay, because I, I know that. there's starship piloting and repulsor lift operation. Oh, so I'm seeing it's repulsor lift. Oh, there it is. Reports yeah. lift, I think, is like a tool <clears throat> that's like, you know, pilot jack sort of things. Okay. Forklifts, that sort of thing. You have oh. to have your pilot jack driver's license in Star Wars. <laughs> Apparently. Here's your blaster, but don't you dare get on that pallet jack. <laughs> or forklift. Star Wars, forklift. It's, a good thing, it's a good thing Star Wars isn't political or else it'd be trying to tell me something. Uh-huh. But you should be able to see the stats to see. Yeah, yeah. I do. It, and it, it's a heavily modified speeder. It's obviously built more for racing. Uh, yeah. They basically doubled the flight ceiling of the thing. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, now, it can't maintain that indefinitely. Yeah. Uh,
But, just a can if necessary, but shouldn't be the consistent right. use. Or, you know, if you wanted to jump something like the Duke Boys, you can do that. Uh-huh. <clears throat> as as I'm, like, making this conversation with, um, with the... As soon as, as, soon as you say, eh, it's credits, I, I like, kind of go like this to Jord. Uh... And yeah, if you pass it, if you pass in the comm link, George, like you know, nice to meet you, or nice to speak to you, Captain. Uh, hate to drop this in your lap so unexpectedly, but uh, it's it's just been a weird day. Welcome to my life. Weird couple of days, truthfully. Uh, and yeah, I mean, and he, and he breaks down how they were planning to break the winnings up. Uh. Basically, he'll give you, uh, you know, Thal, what was going to be Thal's share of the winnings. And then him and Thal just split what was going to be his share, you know. Of course, how much you make depends on, you know, where you come in on the race. But... Mm -hmm. uh... Makes sense. And I don't Alrighty. actually have I don't actually have the rewards written out, so <laughs> something for next week, I that's, guess. That's yeah, a yeah. next week problem. Yeah, next week we'll probably start it with the actual race. We'll, we'll, really we'll make sure to remind week. you. Uh, yeah, I really meant to do that this week. Tuesday at about five fifty. <laughs> hey, did you figure out how many credits we're getting? You know, each spot gets. Yeah, that that is something that he he would want to know for sure. Uh, you know, but it, it it's a big deal race, so you know, first prize is pretty decent. Yeah, good chunk of credits. You know, it's not going to be what you're making on the medical supply run or nothing, but yeah, you could buy a fifth droid. <laughs> but for something that'll be, for something that'll be like you know, thirty minutes to an hour of work, sure. Yeah, using that's somebody else, using somebody else's equipment. <laughs> That, yeah, that's honestly basically where he's at with it. Is all he has to do is race, and yeah. he's a pretty good pilot. And I, I don't know how big a car guy, quote unquote, you know, the captain he is, but if he's a car guy, this is this looks like a pretty sweet ride. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, he's not a huge car guy, but he does keep up with it because it's stuff that he might have to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, how old is the captain? He's... I wrote this down. Uh, uh, he is about 31. And how old is Ozen? 57. Okay. Yeah, Ozen's much, much older. So Iria is actually closer to Jor than... Than Jordan is to Ozen. Uh, I think Jordan would be floating around 40 or so. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, in your childhood, you may remember seeing some of these cars. Mm. You know, the, the stock version is still running around. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you and Jordan, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap here with you and Jordan kind of working out the details. Uh, Fair enough. Race is in 30 minutes, so just, you know, as soon as you can get here, it'd be great. Uh, I'll get a taxi. Uh, they've got an astromech loaded up in it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you could of course bring your own if you wanted to. <clears throat> uh, the the guy will hear. Hey R two, how do you feel like racing? Excited whistles <laughs> in the background. <laughs> You hear Jord laughing over the intercom or over the comm link. Uh, but all right, so we will wrap there for this week. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, and we will wrap what up the race, the race adventure next week. Yeah, I guarantee yeah. it. Assuming, uh. we, assuming we have session. Yeah. 
I would say that's a little ominous. I am kind of, kind of, uh, jinxing us, probably. Uh, um, let's say you keep dangling all these plot threads. Honestly. Well, I gotta set up a bunch of the plot threads here early, and then some of them won't crop up again for a while. Uh-huh. That bounty hunter's gonna be like, remember me, Kala asshole? Who are you again, bird boy? <laughs> just remember me from Kala? Irea from behind him. Just gun out. Yes. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I hope y'all had fun today. Uh, I always enjoy running. I hope anybody that was uh, watching enjoyed it. No, join us next time. Yeah. If you're not tired of gaming for the week, <laughs> Dire Bear has got a. Uh, well, we've got more games. Jeremy, go into the more games. Oh man, I you had me in the first half. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, you can join JT with False Colin Knights. Uh, you can see Pink Rambo and her crew on Thursdays with the Knights Ransom. On Saturday, you can see the Stolen Cities, uh, which if you look in the Discord, you'll see a couple of clips that I came up with uh, that I posted of the Stolen Cities. Uh, that is uh, headed up by Loremaster Alex. And on Sunday, you've got Varenheim with Trail, and those are all D&D 5th Edition. And then coming back, on Tuesday will be us with Star Wars. You know, a bunch of the is it this Friday that the a bunch of the GMs are playing a game, but I don't remember if we're streaming it or not. So I probably shouldn't say too much about it. You've already said too much. Bold yeah, of me yeah. to assume he, bold of you to assume there won't be just <clears throat> content going on. Well, I kind of if assume all the GMs that... are 